Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be looking at an exponential equation. We have square root of 2 plus 1 to the power x plus square root of 2 minus 1 to the power x and their sum is equal to 6. And we're going to be solving for x values. Now this is a pretty interesting equation and I could probably say a little bit of uh, non-standard because we have two exponentials with different bases. They have the same exponent and then their sum is a constant. So we can basically say that this equation looks like this, a to the power x plus b to the power x equals c, where a, b, c are real constants. Is it easy to solving these equations? Not really. In some cases, it's very difficult, and in some cases, it's not even possible, unless you use numerical methods, but that's not what we're looking for. So before we get into the solution of this problem, and let me tell you, I'm going to show you, if I don't forget, sometimes I do, I'll show you the graph, and then also a couple different things which I think is pretty interesting. So, oh, wait till the end. So, the first thing I want to do when we have an equation like this, for example, if we had 3 to the x plus 4 to the x equals 5 to the x, then we would probably say, okay, Pythagorean theorem, x equals 2. And if you really wanted to show that there are no other solutions, you could divide everything by 5 to the power x. And then you can kind of show that, okay, the left-hand side is the sum of two decreasing functions, therefore it's decreasing, and the right-hand side is horizontal line, so they can only intersect at a single point, which means there's only one real solution. Now, what would happen if you had a 5 on the right-hand side instead of 5 to the power x? So let's say you had 3 to the x plus 4 to the x equals 5. Then would you say that x equals 2 is a solution again? No, you wouldn't. It would be a little different. What about we change this to 25? Then x equals 2 would work again because 5 squared is 25. Make sense? Okay. But how do you solve when you have a constant on the right-hand side? This one is understandable, but what about this? Could we do the same thing? Divide everything by 4 to the power x? Possibly. Let's give it a try. If you divide by 4 to the x, this will become 1, and this will become 4 to the x. And I think I've done a similar problem, or maybe with different numbers, a long, long, long time ago. Who knows? Many years ago. It's been a while, right? So, this is decreasing, that's decreasing. Okay, so both sides are decreasing. Was that, does that mean uh, we're going to have a single solution? That's a good question to ask, right? So, this is not that straightforward. So we're going to struggle a little bit. But one thing that makes this question really nice is the following. Uh, let's talk about that as well. But before we get into that, let me tell you, could we just divide by root 2 plus 1 to the power x? We're going to run into a similar scenario, so I don't think that's going to work. Now, if you had something like this, let's say, I don't know, just making it up, by the way, equals seven, eight, whatever, then solving this problem would be fairly hard because these two bases are not related, or are they? What do you, wait a minute. What do you mean by related? Well, if you can uh, find a relationship between the bases, then we could probably solve the problem, right? And we'll talk about that, but before we do that, can we just test some numbers? For example, if x equals one, is that going to be a solution? Let's test it out. Square root of 2 plus 1 to the power 1 plus root 2 minus 1 to the power 1 equals 6. I don't think so because that's just 2 root 2. And as you know, 2 root 2 does not equal 6 because 8 does not equal 36. They're far apart, right? So what do you do though? Well, this doesn't work. Maybe two x equals 2 works. Let's give it a try. Okay. If you use x equals 2, then you will get the following. And let's square each one. This is 2 plus 2 root 2 plus 1. And this is 2 minus 2 root 2 plus 1. 2 root 2 cancels out. 2 plus 1 is 3. 2 plus 1 is 3. 3 plus 3 is equal to 6. Yay, we solved it. Great. Trial and error wins, right? Well, this time. It doesn't always work like that. Obviously, if the solution was x equals 7, would you try all the numbers? What if x is equal to a negative number? Those are some good questions to talk about. That's why we need a systematic way to solve these kinds of problems. And I know some people are going to say, 
oh, this problem is contrived, which means it's been specially designed to give us a nice solution. Yes, because all competition problems, almost all competition problems are like that. So please do not complain about it. That's normal. So now, how do we solve this problem though with a more rigorous method? So that kind of comes down to finding the relationship between the bases. And here's where, what they are. We have root two plus one and root two minus one. How do you think they're related? <laughs> well, multiply them and you'll see. Because when you multiply, you're gonna get difference of two squares. You know the formula, right? A squared minus B squared. So it's gonna be two minus one, which is one. Uh-oh. Their product is one, which means they are reciprocals. Beautiful, but how does that help? Here's how we can use it. You can say, okay, let this be T. If this is T, then this will be one over T because their product is supposed to be one. Remember that? So that gives us what? That gives us a really nice equation because now this becomes one over T and we get T to the power X plus one over T to the power X equals six. Wait a minute. Instead of calling that T, could you call the whole thing T? Yes, because if you don't, then we're gonna to have to use substitution one more time. So why not? I mean, why not? Not why not? Why use it twice? There's no need. So let's do this instead. Let's go ahead and you see, sometimes you try something, it doesn't work, go back and change it. Easy, okay, don't hesitate. I'm gonna call this T, you know what? Let's call this T instead. Oops, I didn't, that's not a good color, too close. So let's call this T, or maybe U, how about that? This will become one over U, right? So we get U plus one over U equals six, beautiful. Let's solve this quadratic equation. How do you solve it? Multiply everything by u, u squared plus one equals six u, and then u squared minus six u plus one equals zero. I mean, whatever you use, doesn't matter, quadratic formula or completing the square. Let me use completing the square this time. I'm gonna add nine to both sides because that makes the left-hand side a perfect square. Awesome, how perfect is that? Now, from here, we get two solutions. U minus three is square root of eight, or U minus three is negative square root of eight. But square root of eight is two root two, and that's negative two root two. Add three to both sides, you're gonna get the solutions. U equals three plus two root two, or U equals three minus two root two. Awesome. Now, what do you do with those? Well, substitute back, or back substitute. What is U? U, who are you? Who is you? So u is root two plus one to the power x. That's u, okay? And we're gonna set it equal to three plus two root two or three minus root. Let's do this one first. Wait, how am I gonna solve for x? Hmm. I can think about it and x equals two, I know it works. Maybe x equals two is gonna work, but here's the thing. We have two root two. So if you write this as two plus two root two plus one, and then write the two as square root of two squared, and write the one as one squared, you're gonna realize, uh-oh, this is root two plus one squared, but that's root two plus one to the power x, therefore, x equals two. But how do you solve the other one? Well, easy. It is just the reciprocal, isn't it? Because the square of the reciprocal is the square of the reciprocal is the reciprocal of the square, something like that. So we can now write it as, one over three plus two root two, because the, if the norm is one, when you square it, the norm is gonna stay the same. That's actually the basis for solving Pell's equation, but that's a different story. I made a video about that, so go ahead and find out. And if somebody can share the link, I'll be very grateful because I'm lazy. So now this is the uh, one over root two plus one squared. And guess what? It's root two plus one to the power negative two. Uh-oh. That means x is equal to negative 2. So there are two solutions, 2 and negative 2, but why does the negative solution work? Because if you look at the original problem, the x is kind of interchangeable and they're reciprocal. So if x equals a is a solution, then negative a will also be a solution for obvious reasons, right? Let's go ahead and check out some results, shall we? Da -da -da -da. This time I didn't forget. Okay, first of all, the graph. The graph of this exponential and y equals six, as you can see, two intersection points. Now it looks like a problem, but it's not, it's an exponential, the sum of two exponentials. 
And the real solutions are given like this. And why does Wolfram Alpha use the log? There's a good reason behind that, because if you think about what we arrived at, which I didn't tell you at the time, 3 plus 2 root, right? If you log both sides, right, which you can do, and bring the x over here and divide by that, you'll get the solution. And of course, the other one as well. Should we look at something else, which is pretty interesting? I told you, complex solutions. Why are these solutions? That's a good question, and that's for you to answer. Because this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.